on back there? I what? thought you don't have any neighbors back there. I don't. Well, what's going on in the bushes? You see? There's a lot of movement going on back there. It's probably your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our stupid reactions, you idiots. Corbin, Rick, and you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. content. So yeah, juicy. and uh, thank you for us on Patreon. Follow us on our Twitter account. Today, the monsters are coming. Sweet. Uh, but today, uh, I'm gonna guess. What? We're gonna react to something. No. Bummer. Yeah. Wait. All right. Uh, this is a little, uh, little, uh, little, uh, little, little, little shindig, little interview style thing. Oh, uh, it's called "Can Women Leaders Make the World a More Peaceful Place?" The answer is yes. So then we're done. But it's by that. Uh, say this name. The Sadhguru. Do you remember? Yes, you remember. So isn't Sadhguru the guy that when we were doing the Agori Agori thing, and he was talking, being interviewed? Yes. Yes. So, so can women it. leaders make the world more peaceful? The answer to that question is yes. Ariana Huffington? Huh. Do, you, do you know who that is? I do. Who's that? That's Ariana Huffington. The Huffington Post. Like her family owns it? Yeah, that's like their name. That's like her paper. Oh, really? I may be wrong, but I think I'm right. Well, I didn't even know paper was still around. Yes, there's this archaic thing called the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and they still make paper, Corbin. Here we go. <laughs> In Middle Tennessee. Yeah, hey, you're right. Yeah. If we have more women leaders, would we have a more peaceful world? No. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> so that was a question from the audience for them. Uh, I actually think that right now, um, Women have a big responsibility to lead. Women have a big responsibility to lead a lot of the um, transformation that's happening around how we define success, how do we define work. Because basically the world as it is now has been designed by man and it's not working. Well put. That's true. That is factually correct. Good men were very necessary. <laughs> 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 That's great. But if you think of it, you know, we had the first women's revolution, which was women getting the vote. The second women's revolution, which was uh, led by Betty Friedan in the States and Gloria Steinem, which was basically having access to every job at equal pay, every position at the top of every field. And now I think there is a third women's revolution, which is redefining what success and work are. So instead of simply saying, I want to be at the top with you where you are, just say, is this really the best way to run a business? Is this the best way to run uh, our world? And women are saying no. Many, many women are saying, we need to actually change the corporate structure in which we are competing, change the political world in which we are competing, not just compete on the terms that men created. And you know what? Men, when these changes happen, and they are happening, men are going to be incredibly grateful. <laughs> I like how people laugh. We want to believe that. that, that we, not all men will be grateful that yeah. women step into in, in the making of life, in the very nature in which we are. There is something called as masculine and feminine. It's yes, soothing works. Unfortunately, we have created a world where our idea of success and well-being is overwhelmingly masculine. I'm it's not balanced. You must understand. I'm not talking about male and female. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. A man is capable of being as feminine as he wishes to be in terms of his thought, in terms of his emotion, when he wishes to be. Similarly, a woman is as capable as a man to be as masculine as she wishes when the situation demands or when such actions are needed. 
Right now we have created we have created education systems which are purely masculine, mm -hmm. which is producing <coughs> women also, whether you like it or not. Unfortunately, the idea of success has become masculine. True. Those who want to be successful, even if they're women, they're becoming like this. Yeah. Which is a serious damage to humanity. If you take away the feminine from the world, everything that's gentle, everything that's beautiful, everything that's aesthetic, everything that is the subtler aspect of life will disappear and only providing and survival aspect of life will exist. Right now, there is a serious concern about this. See, twenty-five years ago, <clears throat> in a normal conversation, nobody would think it's worthwhile discussing economy, isn't it? We talked about the weather, we talked about juicy things in the town. We never talked about the economy. Today in every conversation, everybody is talking about the economy. Economy means livelihood, economy means providing. This is purely masculine in nature. I'm not saying women cannot provide, I'm not meaning men and women, I'm talking about masculine and feminine. If you make the society so overwhelmingly masculine, you will obliterate the feminine. In this, everything that's gentle and beautiful will vanish, even in a woman. Because when you set the standards that this is the only way you can succeed, even she will adapt to the situation, which I feel they are adapting, and many women are expressing their masculinity much more stronger and cruder than a man. It is happening. This is distressing because if I'm allowed to share something from my life. You know, uh, those days uh, when we were growing up, my father is a physician, he is the provider. My mother never earned a rupee in her life, but it was never such a thing that if she does not earn, she's something less. Mm -hmm. No, she was the most valued person. <laughs> As a child, when I look back and see, with all due respect, when I look back and see, in the way my life evolved, I could very easily live without my father, but I cannot imagine my life without my mother. She never earned anything, but that's not the point. Where the money came from didn't make a difference, but how it was done in the home was everything. I must tell you the simple things. She did everything in the house, from stitching to embroidering to cooking to everything because uh, she wouldn't want anybody else to do it for her husband and children. She wants to do it herself. If we travel somewhere, if we have to sleep, if she saw an empty pillowcase, you know when you travel somewhere else, there's just white pillowcases, she would say, how can children sleep on empty pillowcases? And she would pull out her needle and thread right there. In five minutes, she stitched a small little parrot or a flower. This little green parrot, I stared and I slept. <laughs> it is so deep in my consciousness today, that little green parrot, because that sense of that caring, I think that little green parrot sank so deep into me and in many ways who I am today is a manifestation of that little green parrot that she <laughs> stitched on that pillowcase. <clears throat> So, this is feminine. I'm not saying everybody has to embroider, but I'm saying that sense, <laughs> that sense of concern is feminine. And this needs to happen. In the system of yoga, when you, you know, the hatha yoga is a common word being used everywhere without knowing the meaning generally. Hatha means, ha means sun, ta means moon. That means balancing the masculine and the feminine within yourself. Only when these two things are properly balanced within you, you are a full-fledged human being, otherwise you're a lopsided human being. The Adi Yogi, who is the originator of yoga, I know in California you think it's Madonna who did it. <laughs> I don't know who you think people are. 
Adi Yogi is symbolized as the ultimate symbol of man. And how he is symbolized is, all the images are one half of him is woman, another half is man. He is the ultimate man, but one half is woman, another half is man. Because a true human being is an equal balance between masculine and feminine. And in workplaces, I don't see why gender should even be an issue. Why should you always look at somebody as a man or a woman? You can just look at them as a human being or as a piece of life. So, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I absolutely appreciate the things that they both said. I just didn't necessarily, I heard an ancillary answer to the question, but not a direct answer to the question in any way, shape, or form in terms of can women leaders make the world more peaceful? I think the ancillary answer based on their answers is a resounding yes, but it, there wasn't a direct correlation. It was more about women and men, especially from Sadhguru's vantage point of the balance of the masculine and the feminine, which obviously I understood what he was saying. Mm -hmm. I know you did too. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking male-female, he was talking feminine and masculine qualities and traits. Yeah. But it didn't seem to answer the person's question who asked about, do you think that women leaders would make the world more peaceful? Did you get that? I got it as an ancillary, but not a direct. Yeah, but I feel like that's pretty common when people, like big uh, people with a lot of esteem, they, they broadly answer a big question instead of answering the, the little question. And no, so I didn't, no. it, it didn't bother me. I, it, I, that, that bothers me in terms of the whole point of that was to answer that person's well, I, question. Well, I think he was saying that, well, I, I just thought it was kind of obvious what he was saying. <laughs> It, it's, I don't think it, he it seems to, that way. I don't think he needs to flat out say it. Well, for me, I just, if, if someone asks you that stupid. question, no, I yeah. just, and I'm not saying they said this, but oftentimes in a situation like that, when you're platformed and you talk, you say things that you just are thinking about versus that seemed to be an open forum where someone asked a question. And then when I'm, when I'm in a situation like that, when I hear someone ask a question and they don't get an answer, my thought is, did you, did you hear the question because the, I didn't really feel they talked about can women make the world a more peaceful place did you I think we got it by the end of it but I don't know as point. an ancillary yeah I don't <laughs> you're, you're the only one that seems to be upset by that it's like I don't care about an ancillary answer like I think the answer he gave was was brilliant and and true and beautiful. oh I loved what he said about the masculine so that's why that's why I don't I don't really I don't really care because that's I got what he was saying in the end. I don't need a specific because it would be actually you think well, about for me, it, all you have to do is you have to think about it less. You'd be like, can women get yes, right? But so therein that, lies yeah. therein lies the answer to the, when you have an answer to that question. Within the answer come the solutions. So, in other words, if the answer to that question is yes, then why don't we implement that answer in order to make the world a more peaceful place? And you don't get those answers unless you directly answer the question is what my, my point is. Cool. So <laughs> I just, I'm, I was here to talk about but, what he actually said. No, well, what he, and what he said was true about the masculine and the feminine, but it wasn't an answer to the question. Okay. <laughs> I think you're getting in your head again, Rick. No. I, I don't get it. I don't, you sometimes latch on to something and it bugs you to your core for some reason. Well, just let it be, Rick. It's okay. I'm very I could have just edited out the first part and you wouldn't have heard the question and it would have been fine. If you didn't and I didn't hear the question, I would have thought, my next thought would have been, what were they talking about? What was this about? Was this a was this a, a forum on well, I think, women? Was I think, this a forum I on? I think these enlightened people. That's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. This, they're enlightened. I don't know. I don't know a lot of enlightened people. So <laughs> <laughs> they're smart <laughs> and they talk all smart like. Right. <laughs> so, but for me, if the smartness <laughs> doesn't turn into a practical application, it's of no use. Well, he can't change the entire world, Rick. By himself. I'm not asking him to change the you, whole world. Oh my god, you could have just appreciated the speech. I did! I, uh, I was pointing out that it didn't seem to answer the question. It did. You got the answer, didn't you? Doesn't matter how you got it, you got it. Well, no. Oh my god. Yeah, it, example. When you were doing algebra, was getting the answer good enough? Yeah, it was. It, no, it wasn't. You had to show the work. 
I, How did you come to that answer, and why did you come to that answer? I always thought they were stupid. I could just come up with it in my head. I, why do I need to show my work? I always hated that, so that's not a good example. <laughs> I always hated showing my work. I was like, I can do it all in my head. Oh, I don't I like it either, show. but there's a point behind showing the work. Yeah, because you're stupid. No, it's, a, it's related to absolutes and stuff. And I'm not negating. I told you, I really Absolute appreciated it. I, abs- I absolutely appreciated and agreed with his statements about the, the, the balance of the feminine and the masculine and how the feminine without it and why it's negated. I also, the other thing I don't understand is why we can't celebrate the differences because yes, at the same time, I think there should be equality, but there are some roles in society, whether they're vocational or they're just recreational or they're in family life that are definitively supposed to be done by women and supposed to be done by men. And they, there's no problem with that being just that's something a woman does and that's something a man does and it should be celebrated that way. I don't think he was talking about men and women. He was talking about masculine and feminine. No, he was. I transitioned that over to, because at the end he did. At the end you he was talking about You want to do something you can do. It doesn't matter your gender. That's not true. That's true. Have a baby, Corbin. I did. 